guys are a rowdy bunch this morning. <laughs> good morning. It is, it is good to see everyone today, and I'm glad that you are uh, enjoying each other's company. A um, couple announcements. Wednesday is the last uh, Bible study for my group. We'll take a break and, and come back in September. So uh, for those of you who are on Wednesday Bible study, I hope you'll, you'll join in. Annual conference is coming up. I wanted to let you know that. Please be in prayer for that. Summer lunch program, we are looking for volunteers. It's going to be a different format this year. It's not grab and go. Uh, kids will be asked to come inside and sit down and eat. They do not have to have a parent with them, but we can't have any meals to go. So we'll need a few volunteers. If you have any questions, see uh, Amanda after church. Also, while you're talking to Amanda or Linda, um, you might want to let them know if you're able to volunteer for Vacation Bible School. We have a special guest musician. He's just getting his start, but he, he wanted to say a few words about something he's doing later today. Good morning, everybody. Um, I'll be giving a recital today at 3 o'clock, I'm sure most of you know, um, at St. Bernard Church in Mount Lebanon. If you haven't been there before, St. Bernard's uh, one of the most beautiful churches in Pittsburgh, in my opinion, so it's really worth the trip. And uh, if you have any questions, you know, feel free to talk to me after service today. So I hope to see you all there. Thanks. He finished his first year at Juilliard, yeah. So. Wait, he got all A's. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Even in English? Even in English. Even in English, yeah. I'm impressed. <laughs> Any other announcements? Oh, after church today, it is gather us in, so please stay after, have uh, a beverage and a goodie and whatever, whatever else. Amanda. Do we have a chain gang now? All right. <laughs> God is good. Let us gather our, our thoughts and center ourselves for worship.
Will you please rise as we center ourselves for worship? Jesus dwells among us, teaching us to believe in his name. The Holy Spirit dwells among us, guiding us down the paths of life. God dwells among us, beckoning us to worship. Join me as we say the affirmation of faith. We believe in an inviting God who invites the poor and the sick, the outcast and the lonely, the immigrant and the refuge, the awkward and the abrasive, the young and the innocent. We believe God invites the best and the worst in all of us. We believe God invites us to a life of faith, a crowded table, a messy church, a deeper truth, a resilient joy, a place to belong, a family among strangers, a world that is just, and a love that knows no bounds. We believe this invitation exists for all people. We believe this invitation exists for us. And when we miss the call or ignore the invite, we believe that God invites us again. Thanks be to God for that invitational spirit. Amen. <laughs> sing our first hymn.
You may be seated. Now is the time of sharing our joys and our concerns. Will you please be in prayer for Marietta Harrell? She is a United Methodist pastor in Atlanta, Georgia. I don't know the exact details, but a man who was accused of murder, I don't know if he escaped or if he had yet to be caught. This pastor went to the house to visit and he was there and she was murdered. Please be in prayer for her church and her family. Please be in prayer for Joanne Murphy. She um, has come down with COVID. She's receiving treatment and she said she's feeling much better, but um, I miss her here this morning. So please keep her in your thoughts and prayers. Are there other joys and concerns? Shorty. Okay, please be in prayer for Mary who had to be rushed to the hospital for a pacemaker. Please be in prayer for Steve Habershaw. He hurt his back and is unable to move and Hannah is home alone with him. And um, Amanda is at a soccer event and um, he's being a little bit stubborn about going to the hospital but um, we're hoping that they can get him to the hospital and he can get treatment. So please be in prayer for the Habershaw family, particularly Steve. Other joys and concerns, Muriel. Please be in prayer for the Patton family whose son uh, passed away suddenly this week. Other joys and concerns. Let us pray. Lord, how majestic is your name. You raise us up out of the ashes. You look at us and see only potential. You have forgiven our sins. You have wiped away the mess that we have left behind. And you surround us with your grace and your mercy. God, you encourage us to take care of the lost. You encourage us to see beyond people's past. And you encourage us to praise your name all the time. Hear our prayers. Strengthen us for the journey ahead as we pray in the name of your Son who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. Today's scripture reading comes from John 14, verses 23 through 29. Jesus answered him, those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the words that you hear is, is not mine, but is the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you all that I have said to you. Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away, and I am coming to you. If you love me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, because the Father is greater than I. And now I've told you this before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe. The word of God for the people of God. Will you pray with me? Invite us in, God, to receive your word, to use it to make it a part of who we are. In Jesus' name, amen. What do you fear? Take a minute to think about it. What do you fear? Now, I'm not talking about what you're afraid of. Like, I'm afraid of heights afraid of spiders, snakes, certain green vegetables. But I'm not talking about being afraid. I'm talking about fear. The disciples are listening to Jesus' last teachings. And he begins in chapter 14 by saying, don't let your hearts be troubled, because he knows they are nervous, because what's about to happen is a little nerve-wracking. And they're not just afraid. They are fearful. Fear is a whole whole different thing. Two weeks ago, I took my dad to the doctors. And as you know, he has dementia. And he, uh, he lives in his own world. And so we head to the doctors, and after the doctors, I said, do you want to go get something to eat, Dad? And a lot of times he says no. He just wants to go back. And he's like, sure, if you want to. Okay, so we walk into IHOP and I get him all settled and we decide what he's gonna eat. And he looks at me very sadly. And he said, Don Lynn, my head doesn't work right. 
And I'm like, no, Dad, it doesn't. You see, every once in a while with dementia patients, they have these periods of lucidity. You never know when they're going to come and go because last week I was Santa Claus. This time he knew my name. And I'm like, yeah, your head doesn't work right. But I said, you're going to be okay. And he continued and he said, my wife is dead. My mother is dead. My sister is dead. All of my friends are dead. I have no one but you and your sister. I'm just going to tell you straight up, ugly crying and IHOP is not a good look. And I said, Dad, April and I love you very, very much. And at that moment, I was washed over with fear. My mother has passed, but it hit me hard that my dad is slipping away, and I'm going to miss him so much. And I said, Dad, what am I going to do without you? Fear. You see, it's what the disciples, they're looking at, at, at Jesus and they are afraid. What are we going to do without you? How are we supposed to go on? And Jesus is saying, you need to believe in my word. You need to have faith. I have given you everything. But I know I'm asking a lot, so I'm going to send to you the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is going to walk beside you and guide you and help you and teach you. Because I know this is a lot. And I don't expect you to do it alone. How many of us, when we have experienced fear, has God walked in the door in the form of somebody else? A Holy Spirit moment. We just had a man come to our door this morning. Perhaps we were for him, that spirit. You're not alone. Don't be afraid. But it's easy to say, have no fear. When some you, someone you love is going to leave. And I said to my dad again, what are we going to do without you? What am I going to do without you? And he looked at me like this. And he said, Dawn Lynn, you're a pretty smart girl. I'm sure you will find something 
to do. He paused. and said, have Doran buy you a puppy. <laughs> yeah, Doran didn't find it as funny as you guys did. <laughs> that was his moment of lucidity, but what a gift. And it is a gift when Jesus says to the disciples, I've given you everything, and I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit, and you're going to be able to figure this out. You have my word, and it is inside of you. And when you are afraid, when you experience fear, I'll be with you. You will not be alone. Jesus goes on and gives them peace. Now, when there's chaos in my house, one of the things I yell is that I just want world peace. This is not the peace that Jesus is talking about. Jesus is talking about shalom, a different kind of peace. Something that is complete and total, a peace that makes you whole. Because when you're afraid, when you're living with fear, it is hard to think clearly. And you need the peace that surpasses understanding. I'm not sure the disciples understood completely what Jesus was saying because they were still learning. John Calvin, I have to call it up on my phone. John Calvin, who is the founder of the Presbyterian Church, says, innumerables are the ills which have beset human life and present death in so many different forms. Go on board a ship and you are but a plank's breath from death. Mount a horse, the stumbling of a foot endangers your life. Walk along the streets, every towel upon the roofs is a source of danger. It may be, it may be said that these things happen seldom, at least not always or to all, certainly never all at once, I admit it. But since we are reminded by the example of others that they may also happen to us, that our life is not an exception any more than theirs, it is impossible not to fear and dread as if they were to befall us all. Folks, we are living in a time where we are consumed with fear. 
You can't go to a grocery store. The price of gas is rising beyond belief. Price of food is rising beyond belief. The gun violence, the stabbings, just the hate. Where's the baby formula? There is so much to fear, and we drink it in. Jesus says, keep my word. I have not left you. I have not forgotten you. And as my dad would say, you're pretty smart. I think you'll figure it out. Amen. Before we sing our next hymn, I forgot to announce during joys and concerns that Donna Powers Kuntz had her procedure and um, based on the findings, she now goes to see a surgeon in June. So please continue to be in prayer for her. Thank you. Will you please rise as we sing our next hymn?
and now receive God's blessing. Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Take that peace and spread it to all you meet. Amen.